Hello. Uh, I'm returning in this video to the topic of devising a reliable uh, servo for the rudder uh, using this kind of stepper motor. Um, and uh, we need a sensor to tell the software where the rudder is when it's powered up because it is possible that it, it could be moved, could have moved since it was last powered down. But once we know where it is, the stepper motor, of course, itself can work out how much it's moving. But we, we need to know where the rudder is when the thing is powered up. And that's what this uh, video is mainly about. Uh, I just cut a little bit out of this large uh, perspex sheet. Then I drew a circle with this compass like that and cut it roughly into a circle and then I turned it on the lathe. I just clamped this uh, squarish thing in, in a bolt and um, turned it using the parting off tool very gently. Um, so now we've got a circular piece of perspex. Unfortunately I drilled the hole not quite in the centre so it's ended up smaller than I thought. It was intended to be 50 millimetres in diameter and it's actually 45 millimetres in diameter. But it will probably work. So then I'm going to fit it on this uh, stepper motor and use this um, opto uh, interrupter switch to give uh, information about uh, where the rudder is, or basically to stop this stepper motor going too far, I'm going to limit it to plus or minus 90 degrees using this. So this opto interrupter switch is um, infrared sensitive. This uh, opto interrupter is an H21A1 combination of uh, infrared emitting lead and a phototransistor. It only requires a couple of resistors uh, to uh, produce a, a logic level, um, a five volt logic level out of it. Um, and I've chosen it because it has quite a deep slot here, which will allow me to use it to sense two different concentric circles, uh, as you'll see uh, in due course. So what I've got to do is paint this black, fit it in there. Actually, I need two switches. Uh, to give me a limit on plus 90 and minus 90 movement. So this is just a first off experiment. I'm going to paint that now. Um, watch the meter up there. Uh, a piece of paper does not... It does obscure the infrared slightly, so it raises from 0 to 1.8 volts, but it's not enough. You need a piece of aluminium or something more opaque like this to raise the output to 5 volts. Um, so I was just uh, scoring this uh, perspex gently with a piece of sandpaper and uh, hoping to make sure that it does not affect the infrared, which it doesn't, or hardly at all. So that's good. I'm going to score it all over, then I'm going to paint it black, and hopefully that black will be opaque to infrared. And if that doesn't work, I shall paint it silver, and we'll see. So when I, the idea is when it's been painted, then I can put it back in the lathe and score it to create uh, the appropriate shaped uh, thing. Well, uh, having cleaned my garage out and taken all my old paints to the dump, the only paint I could find was a matte black paint which looks rather thin to me but uh, as it's freezing outside in the garage I brought this in to dry uh, on my dining room table so we'll see in six hours if that's any good well whilst, whilst I've been waiting for this perspex disc to paint to dry I've been uh, spent about an hour in my freezing cold garage making up this bracket which looks simple enough it's supposed to hold this stepping motor like that. And the screw holes that I've the clearance on these screw holes is quite small. Despite measuring twice and drilling once, there's still 
a very slight error here which is so annoying but that's what happens when you're doing things by in a crude manner in a just with a pillar drill this is what happens to me at any rate so um, what we've got here is this uh, opaque uh, perspex disc assume the rudder is pointing in this direction upwards and we've got two of these uh, opto interrupter sensors up, one up here and one down here this one uh, senses this outer arc and this one is pushed in a bit more and senses this inner arc so uh, at the moment the rudder is pointing uh, straight ahead let's say or straight astern and I want to detect when it is more than 70 degrees from that position so um, if we start rotating the rudder clockwise that's 45 degrees neither of the sensors are engaged at this point but when it gets to that point this sensor starts to detect this uh, um, transparent slot or transparent arc in the disk so from there onwards round to 180 degrees this clockwise sensor will be on going back the other way if we rotate anti-clockwise that's 45 degrees anti-clockwise neither sensor is engaged but when we get to 70 degrees seven, then the inner sensor this bottom sensor starts to be engaged and is continuously engaged until we get to 180 degrees in the 180 degrees position I've arranged it so that both sensors are engaged it's the only case when they both will be so that's the technique that I was planning to use to tell the electronics or tell the software when the rudder is within a reasonable distance of where it should be uh, and also to deduce which direction you should move the stepper motor to get it back uh, if it is if it is uh, out of the allowed range which direction to move in order to get it back into the allowed range without actually going through the bottom point which is uh, uh, a no-no because uh, the ship's in the way there so finally I got that bracket to fit and I painted the disc and it's going to go on there like that actually not like that but uh, in that position and um, one of the opto interrupter switches is going to be in here like that and the other one's going to be the other side and then I'm putting this in this box like that and we need a coupler and a shaft coming out of here I made this uh, tiny del ring bush uh, which is going to go in there with an o-ring uh, and I'm going to turn an aluminium coupling piece which will hold this properly this disc properly and uh, couple to a five millimeter shaft coming out or maybe it's six millimeter coming out here now I have very carefully measured the location for this hole to be drilled here and I guarantee that it will be very slightly in the wrong place when I've drilled it but that's the next thing to do um, you may wonder why I'm going to so much trouble to engineer this little position sensor more or less from scratch when I had a perfectly good angular position sensor in an earlier video well the answer is uh, A that position sensor cost 52 quid 
and B, it won't fit in this box. Well, why don't you get a bigger box? Well, the answer to that is that this distance is critical because um, there's not much space, vertical space, inside the boat. Um, and I've got to couple this to the rudder somehow. And whichever way, I, I've, I wanted to do it vertically like that, directly onto the rudder shaft, but it looks to me as if I'm going to have to do it up that way up and uh, have a linkage because there just isn't the space in this test boat. I hope in the final boat that we will actually engineer it so that I can have the space that I need. But that's why I'm going to this trouble. So what I'm going to do now is uh, put this disc back in the lathe and use it to score the arcs that I showed you. That's probably going to be tricky and may well turn out to be problematic. And uh, then I'm going to uh, use my lathe to uh, uh, turn the aluminium bush that's needed and uh, also drill that hole in the box. Um, and uh, we'll come back in part two when I've done all those things. I'm sorry that uh, this video is a bit of a work in progress rather than I have achieved something, but uh, the point of these videos is mainly to keep the other members of Team Joker informed as to what I'm doing, and uh, you'll just have to put up with that. Thanks for watching.